Hey there, Banigan Addicts. This is Ken Wilford here at Banigan. This is going to be our Tiguan video part two. And uh, I worked on this thing for probably about four hours today. We got a lot of progress. So far, we've got rid of the battery, battery box, the air intake, took that off uh, as far as the uh, air box. Then I was focusing on over here trying to get to the air intake to take that off, which we just got that off of here. Uh, so we can actually get to the water pump, which is supposedly is the thing that's leaking and causing our coolant leak. Uh, but you can see as we're doing this, pulling this apart, you're seeing a lot of oil from the valve cover getting down on here. It gets down, drains down, and then it hits the top of this water pump, which is right here. There's a belt that I believe is driven off of like an intermediate shaft of the engine or something. Uh, so, you know, all your serpentine belt and everything's on this side, but then they could like, hey, where do we put the water pump? Uh, let's put it over here and we'll run it off of a balance shaft or something. So anyway, I haven't even like completely gotten to the water pump yet, but I can actually see it now. And again, this is another issue with this motor of you know, being able to diagnose a water pump without being able to see. I had a, a camera that's on uh, like a little boroscope and I was trying to even just see the water pump. I knew where it was uh, from looking online and looking at some diagrams and things and I could not even see anything that looked like a water pump from my boroscope stuff because it was under this really big uh, exhaust manifold. So I got that off today. I'm actually very happy to get to that point. Um, I'll show you the exhaust man or the intake manifold over here. I'm sorry, I'm saying exhaust. That's not what it is. Here is the intake manifold. Okay, it is a big beast. Um, it actually has a lot of technology going on in here. One of the technology things is the fact that it can is variable. So there are these flaps that can move that can change. You know how much intake air is coming into the motor um, depending on what this actuator is telling it over here uh, these are actually known to go bad again another item that's fa uh, plastic fantastic that goes bad on these uh, I got the records of this car from the dealer this was replaced under warranty in 2012 so I'm hoping it was like an updated version that was nicer Another big problem they have is carbon buildup in the intake. I'm not really seeing that on this one. It looks pretty clean in there. The flaps move good. You go over here, I don't really see a lot of carbon in here either. You know, it's a little bit black looking, but when I stick my finger in there, I mean, there's nothing that I'm actually, that's actually coming off. And you look at it, I mean, it looks dark in there, but I don't really see anything that's like caked on or anything. So. I'm, I'm pretty happy with what this intake looks like. I mean, I hate these all this oil everywhere. That sucks. Um, but, you know, that was what we... That's why we're doing this work. Uh, the other thing, you know, they said in the diagnostic is that the rear main seal over here is bad. Uh, I'm not totally sure on that. You know, uh, let me go under this car and I'll show you what I'm seeing under here. Um, so... When I pulled the belly pan off, this entire base is covered with oil, okay? All the way over to right about where the bell housing is over there. There was oil that was kind of hanging off of that. I cleaned the bell housing off as a test to see, because there's a weep hole in the bottom of the bell housing. I'm kind of assuming if the rear main is actually leaking that more oil will come out of that hole, uh, even as it's just sitting here. I haven't seen anything come out of that hole yet. So what I think is going on is is this valve cover leaks coming down. You know, it's causing like all this oil to accumulate. And even over here, this is a turbo intake thing over here. It's just like got a ton of oil on it. It's blowing back. It's hitting like the suspension pieces. It's hitting the rubber on the suspension piece. So I'm hoping they're going to be okay and not need to be replaced. But, you know, this oil, it's mainly concentrated and focused on where the engine is okay so any place on the engine on the front side of the engine on the back side of the engine you know there's oil 
all over everything. I'm assuming that a lot of that is really due to that valve cover leak and possibly a timing cover leak also. So I'm hoping that I don't, I'm gonna get away without pulling the transmission out and doing the rear main seal on this one. There was no codes on this motor, okay? So that's one of the things that was kinda deceptive about it, I guess you wanna say when we bought it, I, I did scan for codes. Um, usually when you're having these issues, you have a lot of codes and this car had zero codes. Um, even to this day, there is no codes. Okay, but uh, it's coming. Okay, <laughs> it's coming. If you leave these leave these oil leaks go here, you're gonna have a lot of codes. You're gonna have problems with these rubber bushings back there going bad because of the oil getting on them. So that's why we're gonna do this. So we're we're into it so far. Like I said, about four hours. Uh, I'm very happy to get to a place where I've got you know a visual on the uh, water pump which is something that I didn't have you know four hours ago at the beginning of the day uh, and also the all data so I have my old tired sad computer here that's is out my shop so it doesn't really matter but I went ahead and did the all data I got the 1995 for one month all data uh, and it's actually working out pretty great okay they have a uh, step-by-step thing about taking this intake off I basically followed it step-by-step step, looked at all the pictures which were actually pretty clear uh, and yeah it worked like a charm and the intake came off I didn't have to worry about did I not unplug this one plug and break something because it actually warns you it's like pull the intake out a little bit you know get this one last plug unplugged you know you have to take the oil filter off to get to it, I am glad I found that out because I didn't know that. Uh, and uh, yeah, the oil filter was hiding in one last little pluggy poo. Uh, so we got that off. I actually drained the oil. I like to use um, an oil extractor because to be honest with you guys, I hate dealing with, number one, I hate crawling into the car to drain the oil. Number two, I hate that the oil plant uh, drain plugs strip out or they were stripped out by the last person and now I have to deal with it. So I just extract it from above through the dipstick tube here. Oil extractor costs uh, 60 bucks and then your life is so much happier afterwards, believe me. The oil filter, when I did the oil extractor, I extracted the oil, pulled the oil filter off, had a big rag around here to keep the oil from going down. And I, when I took it off, there was no oil that came out. So I think it just all drains down as you're, you know, doing your oil extracting. And when I went to pull it off, it was like nice and it was kind of like this. Okay, no oil sitting in here. No, you know, I had normally take an oil filter off and it's got like all this oil in it. It's bloop, bloop, bloop everywhere. Like there was nothing. So I'm very happy about that, how that turned out. So that's it for right now, guys. This is not meant to be a step-by-step, -step, you know, how do you do this video because there are lots of other videos out there already like that this is more like how does a newbie who has never worked on one of these motors before you know learn how to work on them find things on them you know like I said my number one thing I like to do is I do research I'll get books I'll watch videos I'll do stuff before I even go into a job so I kind of have an idea of what I'm getting myself into um, and then I I try to get the best, you know, manuals and things that I can get. Like I said, right now because the way the Bentley is set up, the DVD ROM, I decided to go with the all data. I'm very happy, okay, because it is giving me um, a step-by-step -step stuff with pictures showing me where bolts are, all that kind of good stuff you want to see when you're doing a project. Uh, and so I would highly recommend uh, all data if you are. You know, looking to do a project on a car that you don't have a manual for, you can jump online. You can pay a subscription for one month, get the you know the manual for it, and get get to work. Okay, it took me like two minutes to sign up for it to get the manual, and then I was I was in, at work. Okay, so instant gratification. <laughs> 
Now the job's not getting done instantly, but hey, at least you have the information you can use to get it going. So I guess that's it for this video, guys. Again, tell me if you want me to keep going. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one.